This is not good. Yeah, I have to admit, I didn't really see this one coming. Uh, those of you that saw the short the other day, uh, I've hit water. Uh, I did the U.S. Geological uh, surveys uh, in my area, and uh, it seems as though you have to be about 47 feet in order to hit the groundwater table. Well, <laughs> I've uh, struck water somewhere around 9 feet. Um, and the downside to it is, is the water table is hovering right at... The concrete floor height that I need okay so uh, today I've got a treat I'm gonna show you a something that I don't I've never seen in the States before maybe some of you guys have it is a waterproofing solution that I believe is going to be my holy grail um, it all kind of started after the last video when uh, you all saw me work in this area right here and I was so close to being to final depth, I said, you know what, I'm just going to continue on. I grabbed this little corner here, and I went down. And uh, we could take a walk down there. And uh, as I was going down, I noticed the soil started to get a little on the mushy side. And I said, well, that's not good. So I continued down a little further, and uh, lo and behold, I hit water. So uh, the first thing I did was uh, keep digging, and uh, naturally installed a pump, and uh, started pumping the water out. Um, all right, this water level here is uh, currently about three feet below what I need, and uh, and that's okay. Um, I didn't know if I actually, you know, was was I ever going to find the bottom of the water, so I pumped and pumped and pumped and pumped and pumped, and uh, no, it kept on filling up. And I watched; I was doing the timing on it, and uh, it wasn't seemed like it was getting any shorter. So I decided to go about four feet away over to this corner. And I dropped another hole. And uh, one of the things that kind of clued me off, I was about to have a water issue, was I was hitting gravel. Now, some of you already know that clay never, ever gives up its water. It just always stays wet. Uh, water won't be able to flow through it. But as I was digging down, it was getting harder and harder. And lo and behold, I hit a rock layer. Now, if there's a rock layer, water can transfer through it. Now, you'll notice here we've got this piece of I-beam currently just kind of laying in this hole and these are one inch gradients uh, markings running across it and uh, without pumping it sits up around I or H somewhere in here right now the water level is way down there because I'm pumping on the other hole so what's happening is this water is transferring down through here uh, underground and uh, and that's not really uh, that's not a bad thing because there is a gravel layer there. Now, I believe if I continue to dig, over dig it, bring in the rock, uh, the crushed gravel, and then uh, use my amazing water treatment here you're about to see, uh, I might actually be able to still build inside of it. Because I do not want to have to live in a 24-7 condition where I always have to pump this hole. I need this hole dry. I'm putting a car in here. <laughs> we don't need a rusty, moist, damp car. So the bottom of the hole will be waterproofed up probably two or three feet along the walls. And then from there will be uh, actually I-beams that are going to be tying in to the concrete slab up at the top. Uh, the walls themselves can be skinned with whatever you want. I'll probably use uh, sheet steel. And the clay and the dirt will actually be cut back from the steel to uh, keep it from when it expands uh, pushing on the walls. Because clay expands and contracts like crazy. All right, now let's go to the bench and let's look at this incredible new stuff. So the million dollar question, what the heck am I gonna do with all of this water? It is exactly right at the depth that I need to take and pour concrete. Well, I, the water could be controlled, it could be diverted and pumped away, and, and then do your concrete work, but at the end of the day, I don't want water in this pit. I don't want water seeping through the corner in the wall. I don't want a car stored in a moist environment like that. So I've got to find a good foolproof waterproofing system. I can only do this one time. So after much searching around, I'm gonna put links down below. There's some videos I want you guys to take a peek at. This is some really next level stuff that 
I think it's fairly new, actually. Um, and so maybe this will be the first time you'll see something. Maybe you'll learn something. I don't know. Uh, I did find this material in the States. Um, and I'm not going to even say the name of the company because they didn't even want to work with me. They didn't want to deal with me. Uh, the bottom line was I wasn't spending enough money. Uh, I needed basically two rolls of this waterproofing material. And uh, each roll was, I think, about three feet wide, uh, 100 feet long. And the guy on the phone, he told me, he said, well, he said, stuff's pretty expensive. I said, I get it. What's expensive? He's about 1800 bucks a roll. I said, okay, it's tolerable. Uh, by the time I ended up with the distributor, it was $2,400 and up a roll. And uh, I said, I can't do it. So when that happens, you got to go to the boys in the East. I'm sorry, it's just the way it is. So I end up meeting a gentleman on the internet and he's from the video that you'll see below. And uh, they are absolutely magic. Uh, the company's name is Oriental Yuhong and they make this stuff. Now I went ahead and ordered, they gave me these samples to try out and uh, I had them sent over here. And basically what this stuff is, this waterproofing membrane, it is a HDPE plastic. Of course, we all know that HDPE plastic is very, very waterproof. This stuff is next to impossible. You can't puncture this. I don't care if you try a screwdriver at this stuff. You're not going to puncture this. Now, the way this magical stuff works is uh, on the actual rolls, there's a sticky side running down the rolls and that allows you to adhere this stuff together the way that they explained it to me and what you'll see in the video this basically came out of the need for uh, subway tunnels underground parking that kind of thing uh, the gentleman i spoke to here in the states he said they are currently 45 feet below water table uh, someplace up in oklahoma and they are spending millions and millions of dollars on a material like this uh, in order to keep back the water because they're going three stories underground. Now, <laughs> with the Chinese, they have a much, much better deal on it. Uh, there isn't the markup, probably because they're not governed by uh, the same uh, insane rules that we have here in the States. Now, let me explain to the way this goes. Basically, when you're down to depth, whatever foundation work you need to do as far as stiffening up your soil, if it's rock, uh, you bring in crushed gravel, you're compacting the soil, then this stuff goes over the top of it. At the same time, the water has to be continued to be pumped away. You with me so far? This material goes down uh, throughout your entire area that needs to be waterproofed. And from there, you continue to build on top of it. That means uh, your rebar structures, your footers, uh, any kind of uh, reinforcing, all that stuff goes and sits on top of this. Now, right before you're ready to pour the concrete, this plastic layer on here peels away and it reveals a slightly tacky glue that's on one side of this. The other side is nothing. Uh, it also comes in a different flavor as well with a, more of a sand coating on it. I don't quite understand the purpose of the sand coating but uh, I've run two samples that we're going to take a look at here. Now either due to the heat of the concrete or the chemical reaction as the concrete cures, this stuff does something very magical. It bonds to the back of your concrete. And you say, well, why would I want it to bond? Because you have to understand when traditional waterproofing membranes, if they don't stay attached to the back of the concrete, water can leak in one area and then it can work its way over nine feet away to a crack in the concrete and then you have water. So what do you do? You take and you plug the crack because that's the only part you can see when you're dealing with a blindside waterproofing uh, system. This stuff has completely adhered to the back of the concrete. And if you have a, a water coming through a spot in that concrete right here, I can guarantee you that that leak is right there, right behind the concrete through this stuff that got punctured or whatever happened. Now, I saw the tear tests on this stuff. You can't tear this. Uh, this stuff is insanely strong. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's not cheap. But uh, these boys are the ones to go to without a doubt to get it. Um, this stuff is incredible. So let's take a look at Oriental Yuhong's material. And uh, this is a real world test that I've conducted. And which is one of the reasons why you guys haven't seen me, <laughs> besides I've been swimming, <laughs> is uh, I wanna see what happens and what it takes to actually 
debond this stuff from the concrete that they say is going to stick super, super well to it. So what I have here is, is this, I poured concrete onto our HDPE material. With that sticky side, uh, the tape removed and it has bonded to it. Now, number two here, this one is the sand uh, version of this material here. Uh, why the sand, I don't know. Um, I understand it might be less money. Uh, okay. Uh, it is a little stiffer. Um, but, uh, all right. Let's, we want to get this off. This is what I want to know. I want to know how hard is this stuff to get off. This has been curing now for about a month uh, while I've been sorting out this uh, current issue I have. And uh, there are solutions, absolutely solutions. <laughs> Something here has got to work. Does everybody like my cricket in the garage tonight? Isn't it the Japanese that say they're good luck? We'll just... We'll let him be. I tried to squash him already. I couldn't find him. All right. So, something here's got to be able to pick this off. Now, I haven't tried this yet, so I've been waiting for this this day, and I wanted to do it under under video. And holy cow! Oh my gosh! Wow, <laughs> I knew it. I knew this stuff was going to be like this. This is incredible. If you watch the video, you've already seen it. Yeah. Everybody see that, right? Okay, here we go. Holy cow. Let's get a better bite on it. This stuff <laughs> is seriously bonded to the back of this concrete. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How incredible is that? is a heck of an incredible adhesive. <laughs> 3M, eat your heart out. <laughs> These boys know how to make glue. There it is. <laughs> that is the stuff. So yes, I think this is a solution. I really do. I think this is a, a very viable solution that will, without a doubt, if I can create an envelope, in my rectangular little world here, nine feet underground, and pour concrete up against this, I'm never going to have a leak. Let's see what the, this was the sand one. I'm kind of curious. I'm sure this stuff. It's got the big bars. Holy cow. All right. This one is coming off a little easier because it appears that the sand coating is on here. It's still stuck. It's, it's stuck really, really good. Uh, let me show you what the sand coating I'm talking about. All right, we saw the smooth, okay. very flexible. Because that's going to be a concern when you start talking about wrapping this around a corner. Now, I don't have to waterproof all nine feet of the walls. I'm cool with that. I know where my water level is. So as long as I come up probably three or four feet up the walls, that's plenty. Absolutely plenty. All right, here's the sand material that I was telling you about. And, and I'm not really sure why they, they have this version, but... It's a, it's a sandy backing. This is the, the normal back that we just saw. Okay. And that side was the sand coating. So to me, it looks like the sand coating remained behind. And the adhesive is 
Must be underneath this, I guess. Okay, because that's one thing with this sand coating. Notice that I didn't have to peel off the plastic. Okay, but it did bond to the sand. It bonds to the sand very good. It it does a it does a, a really good job bonding to it. Uh, one thing I did notice about this one is is it's not quite as flexible. Yeah, this one is definitely not as flex as more flexible. Yes, mm -hmm. it's flexible, and this one's a lot more stiff. So I think personally, I'm going to want this uh, version of this stuff in order to be able to roll it up the walls and, of course, attach it to itself in the corners. And uh, and there we go. Uh, it's new. Uh, at least it's new to me. Uh, might be new to some of you guys. You know, the waterproofing world is, the, the risks are so high. There's so much money involved that if you screw it up, <laughs> you really screwed up. Uh, the damages can be costly. Uh, you know, to, uh, to fix the problem is insane. So you got to do it once. You got to do it right. And to me, if it means spending a couple grand uh, on uh, getting the correct waterproofing membrane uh, living in there, then uh, I'm all for it. Absolutely all for it. Um, I don't think you guys really need to see a puncture test on this stuff. Uh, you feel free to watch the, the uh, Chinese video that I'm going to link below because uh, the guys in the States, I can't afford them. Uh, not for a project. I mean, I have to keep this in, in check. Uh, this is what a new car costs, this project, when it's all said and done. Uh, so it, it's an awful lot of money, and i got to do it right and pick my battles. And I think this is going to be the stuff I'm going to go with. So to my guys in the Orient, I hope you guys get a chance to see this at Oriental Yuhong. Uh, <laughs> this stuff absolutely blows my mind. That is, that's what, after 30 days of cure on this concrete, that's what that looks like. So, all right, stick around. This, uh, this, I'm not giving up yet, and a little bit of water certainly is not going to deter me. Thanks for watching.